We're going to solve the following non-homogeneous linear equation. y double prime plus 2y equals 2x plus 5 minus e to the power negative 2x. The general solution of non-homogeneous linear equation has the following form. y equals yc, this is the complementary function, plus yp, which is the particular solution. To find yc, complementary function, we're going to solve the following homogeneous linear differential equation, y double prime plus 2y prime equals 0. To solve that, we're going to obtain characteristic equation, m squared plus 2m equals 0. Um, this is quadratic equation that I can solve by factoring, m, e m times m plus 2 equals 0. So from here, m equals 0, and then m equals negative 2. That means that the general solution to this homogeneous equation is y equals c1 times e to the power 0x plus c2 times e to the power negative 2x. Now, e to the power 0x is the same as e to the power 0, and all that is just equals to 1. So that means that the general solution to homogeneous equation is just c1 plus c2 e to the power negative 2x. Now, of course, this general solution to homogeneous equation is the same as a complementary function, yc. So I can say complementary function. So we got that part. In the second step, we're going to obtain a particular solution, yp. Um, it has the same form as the function gx, the right-hand side of this non-homogeneous uh, non equation. So let me write down, so it's just in front of me, g of x from non-homogeneous equation is 2x plus 5 minus e to the power negative 2x. And I know that particular solution has same form. I can see that it actually consists of two functions. It's the sum of two functions, a polynomial function or linear function, and this exponential function, right? I can think about it as function g1 of x plus function g2 of x, right? And that means that particular solution yp will also have two parts. So the part that I am calling g1 of x, again, it's a linear function. So then technically, um, I'll call it yp1. Should have same form, so I'm going to write down ax plus b. But now I have to be careful here. Every time when I set up the um, particular solution, I always have to check if any terms of this particular solution um, duplicate terms in this complementary function. And as we now compare them, I can actually notice that this term that I call b is just a constant. It duplicates uh, this term in the complementary function, right? c1 is also just a constant. So the term duplicates c1 from complementary function. And if that happens, then what we need to do, we need to multiply this portion, well, in this case, um, our particular solution will consist of two portions, right? It's just because the function g of x is, um, has this form. But in general, I have to multiply a particular solution, in this case, by a power of x. Now, what power do, you, do I choose? Well, I have to choose the smallest possible power of x so that when I multiply this particular solution by x with that, to that power, I no longer have the case that some terms duplicate terms from the complementary function. And that means, so if I start with the lowest power of x, which is power 1, so if I multiply that by x, it's going to be ax squared plus bx. And now I can see that by doing that, none of the terms here will duplicate terms from this uh, complementary function. So long story short, it's going to be enough for us to multiply by x. 
I don't have to increase power any any higher. So that means that this first portion of the particular solution is ax squared plus bx. Now the second part of function g of x is negative <clears throat> e to the power negative 2x. That's an exponential function, so we know that in this case, the particular solution, um, it has to um, have the same form, and that means that it should be c times e to the power negative 2x. I, I need to make sure that I'm not repeating the constants, right? I used a, b, now it's c. Okay, so in this case it has form as well, this portion of function g of x. But once again, I have to check if my particular solution uh, duplicates any terms of the complementary function. And again, that's the case, right? Oh, I forgot x. Um, what I can see here that this portion of the particular solution duplicates this term of the um, uh, complementary function, right? So that means that it also has to be multiplied by a power of x, and in this case, again, um, it's going to be enough to multiply it by x um, with power 1. So as soon as I multiply it by x, it's no longer going to duplicate uh, this term or any other terms. So that's duplicate uh, c to e to the power negative 2x from complementary function, and that's why we're multiplying it by x. Okay, so that means that this portion of the particular solution is now cx e to the power negative 2x. Okay, and then um, particular solution now looks this way. I'm just putting those two pieces together. It's ax squared plus bx plus bx, okay, that's that part, and then plus cx e to the power negative 2x. So that's going to be the particular solution. Next, we need to plug that solution into the equation, which means that I need to obtain its first and second derivatives. So I copied that particular solution, so I have more space to find derivatives, and here's the first derivative. That gives me, first terms gives me uh, a 2ax plus b plus, okay, looks like we have to use product rule here, right? So derivative of the first factor is uh, just c times the second factor plus derivative of the second factor that's, I have to use chain rule, right? Negative 2e to the power negative 2x times the first factor. I'll just rewrite it. I'll, um, 2ax plus b plus c to the power, uh, c e to the power negative 2x, and then minus, uh, let's say, 2cx e to the power negative 2x. I'll just put them in this order. Okay, now let's find the second derivative. y double prime. Derivative of this first term is just 2a. Now derivative of that is 0. Plus, <clears throat> chain rule here, it's negative 2c e to the power negative 2x. And then product rule again. Um, what I'll do, <clears throat> I'll, I'll keep that minus outside. And I write down the product rule here. So derivative of the first factor is 2c times the second factor, then plus derivative of the second factor, chain rule negative 2 <coughs> um, e to the power negative 2x times the first factor, 2cx. Okay, so I'm going to simplify this. Uh, it's 2a minus 2c e to the power negative 2x. And then here it's minus 2c e to the power negative 2x 
that's negative but then it's another negative so it's plus plus 4 c x e to the power negative 2x so i think it's like that and i can combine like terms here okay so 2a minus 4 c e to the power negative 2x plus 4 c x e to the power negative 2x okay now we're ready to plug this all into the original equation which is y double prime so that 2a minus 4c e to the power negative 2x plus 4cx e to the power negative 2x plus 2y prime y prime is right here i have to multiply it all by 2 by positive 2 so plus 4ax plus 2b plus 2c e to the power negative 2x and then minus 4 cx e to the power negative 2x that's the left hand side and then the right hand side is 2x plus 5 minus e to the power negative 2x okay so what can we see here uh, looks like those two will cancel right we can combine those two terms right anything else um i don't think so and i'm gonna be writing all the terms on the left hand side um, in the same order as i have them on the right hand side so first i'm gonna start with the x term it's right here for a x then i'm gonna write a constant so constant here okay i have two two constants i'm gonna put them together it's 2a and plus 2b these are the constants 2a plus 2b and then finally e with its power okay so yeah those two we combined um, negative 4 plus 2 that's negative 2 minus 2 c e to the power negative 2x okay i think that's that's all we have on the left and then the right hand side is 2x plus 5 minus e to the power negative x next since it's an equality it should be an equality um it means that coefficients should be equal on both sides so that's how i'll find a b and c coefficient of x on the left equals the coefficient of x on the right so for a equals 2 now constant on the left i mean the constant on the right equals constant on the left so 2a plus 2b equals 5 and then finally the coefficient of e to the power negative 2x on the right equals coefficient of e to the power of negative negative 2x on the left now on the left it's negative 2c and on the right it's negative 1 oh right here um, and on the right it's negative 1 okay so that's our system of equations that we we can solve pretty quickly right because we have few super easy equations now for from this first one we can see that a is divided by four on each side so it's one half now from this third one c divided by negative two on each side it's also one half and now knowing a i can find b right so from the second one um, it's two times one half which is one plus 2b equals 5 so that's 1 i'll subtract 1 from each side so 2b equals 4 or b equals 2 b equals 2 okay so we found a b and c now let's take a look at the particular solution with the actual numbers particular solution it's a so i have it here at the top right that's where we're gonna put a b and c a is one half so i'll have one half x squared plus bx plus 2x b is 2 and then plus c 
plus c, which is 1 half c x e to the power negative 2x. So that is the particular solution for our non-homogeneous linear equation. And what is the general solution? Well, step 3, we're going to write down general solution, and it's combining complementary function and particular solution together. So y equals uh, complementary function c1 plus c2 e to the power negative 2x and that's complementary function and then I'll continue with particular solution plus 1 over 2x squared plus 2x plus 1 over 2x e to the power negative 2x. So that is the general solution to the given non-homogeneous linear differential equation. And these are the steps.